Ah, hold on. <laughs> I'm setting up my cameras and I didn't realize I didn't turn on my good camera to start broadcasting today. Hold on. Foop. There you go. That's more like it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our daily get together. Uh, Luna is missing, so I'm going to get rid of the Luna cam right now. This is our daily get together live here on Facebook. We come live every morning at 1030, make the show available later on in the day on YouTube, but not live. And uh, we get together to review headlines, comments, suggestions, ideas on how to best enjoy Puerto Vallarta, our city, um, from the point of view of local English speaking folk like you and me that live here and are trying to discover the best there is to offer here, how to connect with the city, how to connect with the Mexican culture, so forth and so on. And um, if this is the first time that you're joining us today, um, you can leave the word new in a comment and we'll give you the proper welcome you deserve. And of course, um, if you have any important comments or questions that you would like to bring up during the broadcast, you're more than welcome to write the letter Q before your comment. That way we will try our best to bring it up. And uh, if we don't bring it up immediately thereafter, um, we will definitely bring it up while we are reviewing the, the comments later on in the day. It is cold. It is cold. And um, I hope we're going to keep warm today. Um, I'm a little warm myself. I'm afraid it's going to be a little bit of a ranty day because of these news that um, have to do with this boat that capsized yesterday in Puerto Vallarta. And, um, and we're going to talk a lot about that, about how the news um, are being mirrored both locally, nationally, regionally, internationally, and how we are reacting to that incident. Um, it, is, it is something that troubles me, and I'm going to share my point of view on a couple of things. You may or may not disagree with me, but that's part of the fun um, of why we get together here, or at least the fun, I hope. We're also going to take a look at some of the things that are going on this weekend um, here in Puerto Vallarta, along with our very promised explanation of what happens when you bite into three wise men cake and all of a sudden you are chewing plastic baby Jesus figurines while you're enjoying your cake. This is a very Mexican tradition, and we're going to tell you where it comes from and how to best enjoy it if you happen to come across this particular cake. But before we start, let us take a quick look at your initial comments and questions and seeing who is in the house. Um, I see our usual friends, many folks. Uh, it's cold in Colorado. Well, it's cold down here too. Everybody, it seems like the whole world is cold these days. Um, good morning, Dan. It is always great to see you. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see who else is in the house. Uh, Alan Shepard is always here with us. It's great to see you, Alan. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> My sister says, good morning por la morning. I love it. Uh, I love it. I love it. Um, 
let's see after a much needed day off yesterday it's back to the salt mine today i hear you i took a very relaxing day yesterday but today we are we got up very early in the morning we got up at like 5 30 in the morning and we just started plowing away at work uh let us see who else is here i saw a question from william where did you live before boston and where did you grow up well, it's, that one is easy. Before Boston, I was living in Mexico City. I was born in Monterrey, which is the northern part of the country. I lived in Monterrey from um, when I was born till when I was about 10 years of age. Then I moved to Mexico City. And when I was 19, I moved to Boston. And that is the story of my life in a nutshell. Monterrey, Mexico City, Boston, Puerto Vallarta. And we are still here. Uh, Question from Ronnie. My electricity in Old Town on Manuela Mediegas on New Year's Eve. I have heard that electricity went out and sent said Sebastian. And then, of course, there was a major outage a few days ago in the news. Any ideas? Um, actually, no ideas, Ronnie. I couldn't tell you why your electricity went off. Uh, a lot of times electricity goes on when folks are making repairs. When it is going to be a widespread event, usually the CFE, which is the Comisión Federal de Electricidad, or the Federal Elect Electricity Commission, makes announcements. Um, and I have not seen any announcements, so maybe it was just something um, that was small and minor. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, but if I see something in the news, I will be so very glad to share. Um, love my comment about the plastic baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are coming to our mouths very quickly. <laughs> um, Happy New Year to Eric Wichner, our, our favorite uh, uh, street food tour guide here in Puerto Vallarta. Um, if you are asking why I say that, it is, of course, because Eric is the founder and owner of Vallarta Eats Food Tours, a wonderful activity you can enjoy while here in the city. Um, uh, Ronnie is from Massachusetts, Plymouth. That's wonderful. I very much enjoyed seeing Plymouth Rock when I first came to the United States, although I must say I was kind of disappointed. I was expecting something ginormous and spectacular and it's really not that big but i was happy to be there um is there a nickname for people from monterrey like patas saladas yes we have the formal one which is regio montano um which comes from the word um uh, royal mountains or magnificent mountains regio montano and then for fun we call ourselves monterreyenos which is just a word that doesn't exist it's just a fun word that we make up and i think we're pretty much here so let us get started with some of our news that we are going to share with you today let's go okay so you know by the book uh, vaccines are supposed to arrive in our country and in other countries, and then distribution is supposed to start. But of course, there's been all kinds of snags. I know that in the United States, the vaccine distribution is not going as fast as people would like it to go. And uh, here in Mexico, there's been a fair amount of complaints uh, by doctors uh, in the social security system in Mexico that argue that vaccines are not necessarily only going to um, to the people um, that are in the in the front lines of, of helping COVID-19 patients. Of course, um, I should give as, as an explanation, our country has decided that the first vaccine recipients would be medical personnel that is in the front lines. But unfortunately, um, that is not what is happening. We see here that some doctors are uh, complaining that uh, some vaccines are going to administrative personnel in the hospitals uh, when they are supposed to be going to uh, first contact um, professionals. So this is something that is going to happen, unfortunately, uh, both the fact that we're going to experience a certain amount of favoritism and also it's good to see that the medical personnel themselves um, are, um, are complaining and raising their voices. Hopefully this will help um, 
this will help uh, the vaccine distribution to be more even, hopefully, and um, and hopefully they'll be able to keep the, the schedule they're supposed to be keeping. And um, let's see, what else do we have? Well, we have to talk about this uh, boat business. <laughs> okay, so yesterday we heard that Out and About published about the boat, capsizing this was a gay tour uh, that went out around the bay. It was um, a local vessel that has business uh, here in town. They have a website where they cater uh, to uh, LGBTQ um, tours and they had a big party and the boat apparently was out around Kimixto when it started sinking and it started sinking and uh, fortunately it started sinking close to the bay and there were enough um, uh, vessels around it that they were able to um, rescue all the passengers um, Nobody was hurt from the reports that I've read, both in in uh, in media and also from hearsay. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of a video, just so you can get a sense as to what this looked like. <laughs> Very, very terrifying indeed. And this goes on for a little while, this video that I'm sharing with you. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. And, um, but I certainly would not have wanted that to happen to me or anybody that I know. Uh, the waters must have been freezing. I mean, we know what the temperature has been lately. And, um, and, um, and that's what happened. You know, it was um, covered nationally. Here is a report coming from Excelsior in Mexico City. Uh, this is how a boat sunk with uh, 60 tourists in Puerto Vallarta, says the headline, and then they go on and uh, very briefly describe what happened along with a couple of uh, reactions from, uh, uh, from social media, from Twitter. People are calling it the Titanic version of Puerto Vallarta. Locally, it, the headline was um, not as, as kind. They called it a COVID party in Vallarta caused scandal uh, nationwide because the boat sank. Uh, again, this uh, article came from uh, Vallarta Opina here in town. And, um, and it explains how the dynamic was to board on this boat and have a nice ride and come back and somehow uh, the boat uh, could not handle the high waves and this is how it sank. Uh, internationally, I saw this report um, from Towel, Towel Road. Towel Road, yes, um, that's how it's pronounced. I used to pronounce it Towel Road, but it's, it's Toll Road, actually. I remember somebody told me. Gay party, a boat, gay party boat with 60 aboard capsizes in Puerto Vallarta amid COVID, uh, comic pa COVID pandemic. My God, I can't even, not even come out with the proper words today. Um, again, this was, um, was, was covered by press uh, in the United States. 
And uh, this was the original invitation to attend. And, um, and then um, this particular article comments on the fact that the commenters on social media have been less than sympathetic to the charter guests, criticizing them for partying as hospitals struggle to accommodate patients amid the global COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, this is a very uh, legitimate comment. Uh, here's another one, this one coming from uh, Guadalajara City, uh, Puerto Vallarta, uh, a, a boat with almost 60 tourist sinks. This is how this was described in the city of Guadalajara. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so this is what's going on out and about. And, um, and, and this got me thinking about a couple of things, you know, um, and yesterday we saw a little bit of this happening. Um, it is so unfortunate that a lot of the remarks that I have read about this, uh, including some of yours here in your comments, uh, have to do with either serves them right or have to do with uh, with shaming and so forth and so on. And this got me thinking, what a perfect opportunity to get a sense as to what kind of people we want to be this year. It is so sad to see so many people criticizing, you know, but, you know, whether it was right or wrong that these people were there, they were still human beings. They were still scared out of their wits and they were still freezing cold and thank God nothing happened to anybody. So, um, so a couple of people that have been very verbal, both here and elsewhere, uh, you know, I invite you to really think about how you want to react to news like this. Um, you know, if you're going to shame people, that's fine. If you're going to make jokes about human catastrophe, that's fine. But I'm going to be very blunt here. I'm not really sure that... I want to foster that kind of atmosphere here at Coffee and Headlines. If I am out of mark, please let me know because I don't think shaming people is is going to help much in this situation. I think a lot of people are very concerned about whether they should have gone out or should not have gone out. Honestly, I'm more concerned about the fact that, you know, are the vessels equipped to handle these types these types of situations are the vessels properly maintained uh, for example not even a month ago this was this other vessel here on the bay that uh, it, that suffered an engine malfunction and it it started smoking I mean how fucking scary is that that you are going on a boat and you think you're gonna be fine and all of a sudden this is happening? I mean, I would not have wanted to be on that boat and I would not have wanted to be uh, knowing that any of my friends or loved ones were on that boat. So again, hopefully this will be a wake up call for local authorities to really review their inspection protocols. And, uh -huh. uh, and let me take a quick look at your comments just to see where you're at. Um, uh, Ronnie, I'm sorry that people think about uh, the size of Plymouth Rock. I know that it's symbolic, but you know, I mean, I was a, I was what? I was like 17 years of age when I first went to Boston, um, and you know, I had studied Plymouth Rock, Rock on on history in school, and I figured, well, I'm here, I might as well go see it, and I just had other expectations, but I know that it is an important uh, site nonetheless. Um, let us see. Ba -dum -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba. Thank you, Joe. That's what I'm looking for. Clay asks, the, bo the boat was bottom heavy. Um, I, I, you know, I continue to not get your humor, Clay. You know, I couldn't get your humor yesterday, and I don't get your humor today. Maybe I'm the one that's flawed here. That's flawed. You know, I just can't find myself being humorous about a bunch of guys or people going in the water. Uh, I hope somebody was heavy tipping those panga drivers who risked themselves in several ways to save these selfish people. Again, Shannon, 
um, you know, you're, 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 you're calling names and you're entitled to that, but I just wonder how that contributes to the conversation. Please feel free to let me know. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, thank you, Jeannie. That is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, William says 60 people. I thought gatherings were limited to 10. Yes, it's obvious that the boat was over charged with or rather overloaded with people it shouldn't have been but then again we don't know what happened exactly we were not there we don't know if the boat had previous failures or it's if it simply capsized because of the capacity being uh saturated and whatnot uh totally irresponsible of that boat captain absolutely agree frank but at the same time i also see how a lot of businesses that are hurting are doing irresponsible things. And I'm not saying that that's good or bad. It is happening. Um, I'm glad no one was hurt, but what is the moral difference between Lord Puebla and holding a super spreader party cruise? Um, I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that question, William. All I know is that it is fortunate that um, that nothing happened to these people. Is the uh, party cruise a thing that should happen or not happen? Well, obviously, we know what the guidelines are. We know that these people should not have been on that boat. But um, but that is a fact, you know, to, to, to go one step beyond the fact, in my opinion, and start name calling. Um, that's a different business. And we can do that if we want to. But is that what we want to do? Uh, let's see what else we have over 230 viewers. Well, given my point of view, I don't know that I'm going to have that many tomorrow, Kelly. There's actually 236 people here. Would the critics be so harsh on over 60 people on a plane coming to PV? That's a good question. Um, again, we've spoken about this a number of times, Karen, you know, it's it, to me, it boils down to where we are going to invest our emotional energy. You know, are we going to invest our emotional, our emotional energy shaming people or are we going to invest our emotional energy nurturing ourselves and nurturing things and looking after things that we can actually change and improve? Um, perhaps they will learn a valuable lesson. Yes, absolutely. Hopes, we certainly hopes, hope that will be the case. Lots of lost wallets and phones. Yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, given that how much a phone costs today, I mean, I don't know if you noticed in the video, there were a bunch of guys that were holding their phone up here. You know, they're expensive to replace. Um, thank you, James. That is exactly what I'm looking for. That is exactly what I'm looking for. And, and again, I'm not saying that I'm a saint. I can be very critical and I can be very, very, I can get all bent out of shape about certain things, but I certainly know that I don't want to start my year shaming people and I will continue to do my best to keep this little project, this little experiment that we share every morning as a safe and healthy place where we can create commenting and be productive and nurturing and I I'm sorry to say I have very low tolerance for people who are more concerned on shaming others than than to nurturing a good conversation. Um, yes, you can totally hear it in their voices. That's why I wanted you to see this. This actually was happening to real people. Um, and, and, and I just want to put, put that out there, you know. Uh, I am getting really tired of the holier than thou reaction that so many people display now. Shaming people is not effective. Leading by example is, thank you very much, Barbara. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Lives are lives regardless of decisions one makes, good or bad. Thank you very much, Claude. That's what we're looking for. Um, shaming sucks. Yes. I think a lot of the comments were from seeing the headlines and not seeing the video. Absolutely, Joe. And again, we are so prone through social media to jump to conclusions and make statements without knowing all the facts or thinking about the entire context of a particular situation. Um, would it generate the same headlines if it weren't a gay tour? 
Well, you know, this is a small town, and of course people are going to raise the anti-gay flag by going out and naming it a gay tour. We've seen that a lot of the bar happenings in the evening that should not be happening are being associated with the gay community. And as a gay man, it bumps me out that we are all being classified into this big package called the gays in which we are supposed to be the evil people that don't know how to act responsibly you know but in reality it is happening in all kinds of night uh, nightclubs gay or straight whatever so you know it is unfortunate that we can add insult to the injury by looking at all the headlines that say it was a gay crew so the gays don't take care of themselves uh let's see and i don't want to spend the whole half hour uh, talking about this because we have other fun things to talk about. Um, yes, let's get done with this. All I'm going to say, uh, just to wrap this up, uh, is I cannot tell you how to live your lives. I cannot change your mind. All I can offer is two things. One, my point of view. Why? Because I can. We are in my living room. And number two, I can offer you the promise that things will not be disrespectful in my living room because I would not want to be disrespectful in yours. So everybody that is in this community is welcome to be a part of this community, but be mindful of the fact that we must be respectful to one another if we want to keep things respectful here. And I'm going to be a stickler all through the year, and that's just the way it is. And if this means that I'm going to end up without viewers, well, maybe I'll try doing something else, but I will not allow for disrespectful commentary to go on here. And I certainly hope you agree with me. Um, moving on to other things that I want to share with you. Oh, we have the weather. Oh my God, and the weather. Let's see, weather, 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 come back. Oh, no wonder my computer is slow. I left all my applications on. It is 17 degrees. Can you believe it is that cold? It is 17 degrees. It is 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity is low at 49%. Uh, and, uh, of course, it's going to continue to be cold during the next few days. Tomorrow, Saturday, we're expecting a high of 25, a low of 13, clear through the day. Sunday, mostly cloudy through the day. High temperature of 28, low temperature of 16. And then Monday, we are going to have a high temperature of 29 degrees, low temperature of 19, and it will be clear through the day. I actually have some important announcements to share with you along with what we've been talking about. Let me just quit Photoshop because if I have Photoshop running, Photoshop may decide to update itself. And that is when all my transmissions start going haywire. I've done my research. For starters, I want to remind you that we're in the middle of whale watching season and I've been seeing a lot of reports of spectacular whale watching going on in the bay right now. Here are some pointers that are offered by our municipal government. If you're going to go out and do whale watching, number one, first of all, make sure that your uh, the vessel that you're going to go on is sanctioned. You are going to be looking for a vessel that has a Semarnax um, sanction, and they should have a sticker. Um, and then this one is more directed to, to boat captains. If there are more than two bo boats around where the whales are, it is recommended that the boat captain goes and looks for another spot after all. Whales are here to mate, and we want to make sure that we don't interrupt that process. This one is also for boat captains. Captains are expected to maintain a distance uh, no sm not smaller than 30 meters, and uh, boat captains are not expected to spend more than 30 minutes near a specific bank of whales. Um, again, whale watching is something that happens seasonally here in Puerto Vallarta. It's because whales... Uh, migrate from points north and come here to the bay to frolic and reproduce and do their thing. And it is it is quite monumental to watch them. Uh, you can watch them from the beach or from your condo if you have a high balcony. But of course, the experience of getting responsibly close to the whales 
is something that is a privilege for us, particularly here in, in Banderas Bay, because this is not something that happens everywhere. We're also reminded by the local uh, municipality um, that uh, it is time to pay property tax. Apparently, there's a 15% discount if you owe property tax. You are encouraged to pay your uh, taxes during the month of January uh, so that you can be eligible for this discount. Uh, let me see, let me see. We also have some events that are going on this weekend that I wanted to point out. First of all is uh, the Mercurio Drag Brunch at Hotel Mercurio. This is something that takes place tomorrow. And it is a lot of fun because you get to enjoy a very nice meal. You get to dress up. There are um, uh, strategically sanitized accessories that you can borrow so you can be looking fabulous and have a fabulous um, meal. And of course, this is hosted by none other than um, Paul himself, who dresses up as I lean to the left. And it is also hosted by our wonderful friend Angie Starr, who is a local uh, performer. And she performs a number of numbers while you are enjoying your meal. And then, of course, um, you're welcome to stick around at Hotel Mercurio and enjoy the pool. The pool has temperature control, so it's not going to be as chilly as the weather, hopefully. Uh, we also know that um, apparently the the, the, stu the, the culture studios, uh, the, the culture is a restaurant bar here in Puerto Vallarta on uh, Emiliano Zapata. And it is uh, particularly interesting because they have artist studios there and there's going to be uh, a first annual Deck the Halls in which they're opening the studios for you to enjoy um, exploring the different artists that make art, that create art and sell art at this particular uh, location. This is a beautiful place to visit and explore. It is located in Colonia Emiliano Zapata on Venustiano Carranza, um, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It is, by the way, an outdoor location. So if you're concerned about being indoors, this is definitely something you can enjoy. And of course, today is market day. Um, it's nice to see that Three Hens and a Rooster is going on as they have advertised. And of course, there's the, uh, the, the old town, the Olas Altas Farmer's Market that is also going on uh, today. So if you're looking for freshly made uh, things and, and some art things, um, and, and things that are created by locals. These are two places where you can find them. Let me take a quick look at your comments um, before we sign off for today. Oh, no, what am I talking about? We have three wise men business to, to discuss. Let me take a look at that presentation because I put together an entire presentation for you guys. How could we possibly leave without it? And here it is. Um, let us get started with this. For starters, there are two dates that we need to keep in mind as we move forward and talk about this special bread that we're going to find at Costco and Walmart and La Comer and everywhere. First of all, we're going to keep in mind January the 6th, which, as you know, is... Um, hold on just a second, is Three Kings Day or is the Day of Epiphany. And in Mexico and in Latin American countries, we call it Dia de los Reyes Magos. And then we need to take into account February 2nd, which is a Candle Mass Day or a Feast of the Presentation of Jesus Christ Day. In the United States, it's Groundhog Day, but that's a different story altogether. And in Mexico, we call it Dia de la Candelaria. Now, for starters, let's talk about January 6th. Western Christianity celebrates the visit of the Magi. Magi? I hope it's Magi. To the, to the Christ child. The biblical Magi are also referred to as the three wise men or the three kings. And they were three distinguished foreigners that are said to have visited Jesus after his birth, bearing gifts of gold and frankincense and, and mirth. Mirth? Mirth, oh my God, these words. I hope I'm pronouncing them properly. Anyhow, um, on January 6th, what goes on is that we here in Mexico eat 
Three Kings cake or rosca de reyes, that's what we call it. This is no ordinary sweet bread, though. It is delicious and very fattening, but very habit-forming and wonderful. Um, but some of its characteristics are actually of historical importance. Importance. <laughs> oh, my God, not enough coffee for me today. Um, chances are that you're already going to find them at the supermarket today. And for all I know, they've been selling them for a week or two. And it's perfectly okay to eat this cake today. In fact, you can eat it as much as you want. But um, there are some things that I want to tell you about the cake. Uh, the cake originated in Spain, but it is most commonly celebrated in, in Mexico. It is adorned. Oh, before we go there, I have other things to tell you about why we call it rosca is because a rosca is a round object with a hole in the middle. And this is something um, that, that it's the same thing as a nut, uh, a metal nut. Uh, but a rosca, in this case, applies to around bread. Other breads are called rosca, like, um, well, any bread that has a hole in the middle in, in, in Mexico is called a rosca. And this originated in Spain, but it is most commonly celebrated in Mexico. The bread is adorned with pieces of dry fruit, among other things. And in a very traditional rosca de reyes, uh, the fruit is organized uh, to indicate the four cardinal points, north, south, east, and west. And you can see it on this, uh, on this particular illustration. Um, the cake can either be round or oval in shape, and it symbolizes a crown. And it is commonly enjoyed with Mexican hot chocolate, Mexican-style hot chocolate. This is what we do um, when we eat rosca de reyes. Um, but one of the most important, if not the most important feature of this cake is these obnoxious, if I may say so, uh, plastic figurines that are thrown into the dough when the cake is being made. And uh, these plastic figurines represent baby Jesus. The figuring of the baby Jesus uh, in the bread represents the flight uh, of the Holy Family fleeing from King Herod's massacre of the innocents. Remember the massacre of the innocents? We had Dia de los Inocentes just a few days ago. So what goes on when you cut the, a slice of, of bread with a knife is that there might be a figurine right as you're cutting, or you might actually, by mistake, chew on one of these figurines. They're about, they're about you know, the size of my pinky. You know, they're, they're not very small. But they're not very large. It's not like you're going to swallow them, but you could you could end up chewing on one of them. Or when you're cutting the cake, you are going to um, you are going to find one of these baby Jesus. And I say one of these because a lot of times when you buy a large bread or cake, uh, the cake may feature more than one figurine. So what? happens if you get a figurine? Well, you are chosen and you are wondering, well, I'm chosen for what? And that brings us to the second date, which is February the 2nd, which is Candlemas Day. It is also, as I said before, Groundhog Day in the United States. Uh, but in Christianity, this is the day in which Jesus was presented at the temple. And in Mexico, we call the day El Dia de la Candelaria. And we celebrate this day by eating tamales. And you know what tamales are. But where do these tamales come from? Well, that's where the baby Jesus comes into play. If you get a baby Jesus while you're eating the bread, you are responsible for bringing tamales to the same people that you had the bread with. So um, it is a very dear uh, tradition for us Mexicans to uh, not only enjoy this yummy cake or bread, but also to commit to getting together with friends so that um, you can learn, you can share tamales and you eat the tamales and you have a good time. So that is a basic explanation of why you might bite into this very traditional cake. And you may find a little baby Jesus or a little plastic figurine inside. Be careful with those dentures though. So, um, so that's the end of that. Now I am ready to take a quick look at your final comments. And let's see what we have. 
Uh, 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 uh. Da -da 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 -da. Kudos to all the boats nearby who were able to assist in the rescue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for that, Denise. It's much appreciated. Um, is there any regulation for tourist boat tours? Oh, I'm sure there are. There must be plenty. Uh, Casa Bella Vista. There must be plenty, Lynn. Uh, and this is, I believe that these vessels are being, are sanctioned by Semarnat, which is a nature and environmental secretary um, in our in our government. They have an office here in uh, Colonia Cinco de Diciembre. And I am sure that the vessels are supposed to follow a certain code of maintenance and scrutiny and capacity and so forth and so on. Um, best to focus on the generosity of the rescuers. Absolutely. Uh, -da 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 -da. Let's see. Um, I see something that looks like spam, a visit to trippy shops. Ah, that looks like spam to me. I'm not going to click on it now. Uh, let's see what else we have. Thank you for that, Terry. I agree with you. Yes, we can go back and look at some of these situations and say, well, that was funny, but not, not when it's happening, not while it just happened. Um, um, I, 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 we, no, no, we can't go there. We can't go there. Let's see what else we have. Moving on, question. Uh, would opinions be different if people died? Um, I don't know, Joe. You know, people die everywhere. And uh, in fact, I was looking at the number of people that got killed in Mexico this year. It was crazy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. All I know is that if you were having dinner with me in my home, and you started bitching and bitching and complaining and shaming, et cetera, et cetera, you would certainly not be invited again. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, Brad. You know, Brad, I, I agree with you, but what is your point? You know, many gay people are also doing wonderful things. Many gay people are kind. Many gay people are involved in nonprofit pursuits. Many gay people um, do wonderful things. So where exactly are you going with this business of, of, of tagging gay people as being selfish and idiotic? I mean, that is exactly what is not welcome here, Brad. So, you know, uh, think about that. Just think about that, you know, you, you, just think about that. Uh, and no, Clay, you don't need to explain to me your bottom joke. Uh, and, and I, and, and, but I, I continue to not get your sense of humor here. And, um, and, uh, and that's okay, you know, you don't, I don't need to understand your sense of humor, you don't need to understand mine. But all I can tell you is that I'm going to do whatever I can to keep this space as kind and as empathic as possible. And if you have no way to understand or appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, we've spent the last nine months talking about this, of you know, trying to show empathy, trying to be kind, trying to focus our energy in 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 uh, in in positive things um but it sometimes i wonder if you're if you're paying attention um again you're entitled to have whatever sense of humor you want to have but not in my house um where is luna luna is asleep in the bed she tends to stay in the bed when it's really really cold uh yo también tengo frío carlitos vamos a hacer algo al respecto um uh, da, 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 would you mind sharing the website I am using for the weather status or forecast? It's an application called uh, Carrot Weather. It is available for the Mac and for iOS. Uh, question, what is the word for haywire in Spanish or phrase, it went haywire? 
Um, oh, God, what a good question, James. If um, I think I, I'm going to have to think about that. Hey, wire to me. It means that it went out of control. Uh, uh, and uh, let me let me look at let me think about this because I cannot think of a very specific uh, a very specific phrase that comes to mind. Uh, let's see what else we have. What else we have? Ba -ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. I went haywire. Me volví loco. Yeah, that's what I thought. I went haywire. I lost my control. Um, Fix the problem, not the blaming and shaming. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Ha! I almost broke a tooth the first time I had the bread. Yes, one has to chew um, very carefully. James asks, is there only one per rosca? It depends on the size. Usually the bigger ones, they add more. Uh I found a melted baby Jesus a few years ago. It was traumatic. I would have been traumatized as well. I love it. Uh, da, 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 da. La, da, da, pa, 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 pa. Dia de la Candelaria, my favorite because of the tamales. Of course, I totally agree with that. Well, tamales are great every day of the year, but definitely on Dia de la Candelaria. Um, let's see what else. Uh, what happens if you don't bring tamales in February after getting the baby Jesus? Well, nothing really, but, you know, it's nice to, to have a ritual. Uh, nothing really is going to do, no, nothing really is going to happen. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Da, 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 da. I think we are pretty much there. I think we are pretty much there. Yes, I think we're pretty much there. Let's wrap this up for today. Again, I am sorry for um, for ranting and raving, uh, but again, I have committed to keeping things healthy and positive and friendly and uh, keeping things here objective and not shaming anyone for what they are and, uh, and, and what they are and, and they're not. And Clay, if you think you are being schooled and you want to leave, that's perfectly fine. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There are many challenges, many channels here for you to watch and be entertained. If you don't like what's going on here, just change the channel. That simple. Um, and that goes for anybody else. You know, I mean, this is the way it is at this place. This is the way it is on this broadcast. This is the way it is here in my living room. If you don't like it, go watch something else. And um, it boils down to that. For the rest of us that are looking for a wonderful space where we can exchange kindness and generous and good ideas and stay positive and stay optimistic and stay connected to our city and our country and our traditions and our culture, you're welcome to come back whenever you want. We'll be here tomorrow. Have a great day.